Tonight in a Fox 10 exclusive, one of only four women to sit on Arizona's death row, Deborah Milkey is telling her story. She was at the center of one of the most heinous crimes in Arizona history. Back in 1989, weeks before Christmas, her four-year-old boy was told he was going to the mall to meet Santa Claus. Instead, he was taken to the desert and shot three times in the back of the head. His mother, 25-year-old Deborah Milkey, was sentenced to death for arranging the murder. One of her roommates, a would-be suitor, and his friend were convicted of carrying out the murder. They are both on Arizona's death row. Milky always maintained her innocence. She spent 23 years behind bars before a U.S. appeals court ruled that she was wrongfully convicted. And the detective who claimed she confessed to the murder didn't record it. There were no witnesses to the confession and he had a history of misconduct and lying. Milky was set free in 2013, and nearly 10 years later, she's still trying to make sense of it all. Photojournalist Brad Gass sat down recently with Milky. This is her story. I have worked on some very high profile cases and appeals, but I have never seen anything even remotely coming close to the injustices that I saw that occurred in Deborah's case. In 1989, I thought she was guilty as hell. The whole world thought she was guilty as hell. She confessed to killing her son on the way to see Santa Claus. How could you be any more despicable? And that's what everyone thought for the next 24 years, until a group of attorneys came in and started digging around and developing evidence and looking at what really happened in this case. And that led the Ninth Circuit to say to Arizona, you either give this woman a fair trial for the first time or you set her free. And everyone's head exploded. I remember asking the detective, have you heard anything about my son? And he just ignored me as if I never asked the question. And then when he f finally looked at me, he just, we found your son, he was murdered, and you're under arrest. Just like in one sentence. It was like such a blow that I couldn't even process what he was saying. I know one thing for sure. I did not confess to him. I did not confess at all. This whole case rested on one thing, that she had confessed that to Armando Soldate Jr., then of detective in the Phoenix Police Department, that she had confessed to him and that he had written a report that said, she told me, yes, I killed my son, I wanted to kill my son, da 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 da. And on his word alone, the, t the, the confession wasn't taped, the confession wasn't witnessed, the confession wasn't signed by her, it was simply his word against her. And as the way that the, they presented the case, this man's word had absolute, was gold, the golden standard. Well, in fact, this detective had a history that the state and city knew about of lying under oath, of Miranda violations, of coercing and fabricating confessions, all of which Deborah said happened in her case. And yet they fought to keep that evidence, including this detective's personnel file, showing the misconduct and showing his character for untruthfulness away from the jury and then away from the public for the next 24 years. One minute I'm free and I'm dealing with um, a missing child and trying to get help from the police. And then the next minute I'm in custody for the next 25 years. And for 25 years, she was maligned and she was on death row for something she didn't do. I don't want people to think, oh, she got off on a technicality. There's no technicality here. This wasn't just our story. I mean, this, this was the evidence that the Ninth Circuit reviewed over the course of five years wasn't just negligent or an oversight. They called it more akin to active concealment. I saw perhaps the greatest injustice in the American judicial system. I saw a state that had ignored the law, had ignored the evidence, had ignored the truth, and had sent a young woman at 24 years of age to spend half her life on death row in solitary confinement. I saw a case that had no basis whatsoever, and I saw a dirty cop at the very heart of this whole story. I know sometimes when I think back, I think, wow, I survived that. But at some point, and I don't know when, one day it just all m melted into the other. I don't know, I mean, the years went by, but it was like one continuous flow for me. Deborah is one of the strongest people I have ever known. Her ability to 
be on death row for 22 years in an eight by 12 cell with no contact visits with anyone, including family or us, and sustain her fight and continue to believe in herself and her innocence is extraordinary. You can imagine going to your bathroom and shutting the door and saying, this is where I'm going to live for 25 years. That's what it's like to be in prison on death row in Arizona. I was even amazed myself by the strength that I had to keep going because there were days when I was so tired that all I wanted to do was go to sleep and hoped I never woke up. But innocent people don't give up. They don't. And right is right and wrong is wrong and you just don't go down without a fight. I felt that if I gave up, that I was giving up on my, my son. Coming up next in part two of our exclusive interview with Deborah Milkey, the message she has for the men who she says destroyed her life. I don't advocate for their execution because it's not gonna bring my son back. The death penalty for them, once they're executed, it's over for them, but it's not over for me.